Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Tech Talk Weekly. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the difference between laws, standards, and frameworks. I get a lot of questions about these topics because people sometimes confuse them. So I think this is a great way to help you better understand the topics as you start or grow your IT or career. So the first thing I want to start off with though is before we talk about the differences between laws, standards, and frameworks, let's try and understand why is it important to know about that, right? From an IT audit perspective, why are we interested in laws, standards, and frameworks? And the simple answer is that when you're performing IT audits, you're not performing IT audits just for test and sake. You are typically performing an IT audit to determine the operating effectiveness of controls to see whether they are compliant with certain laws, standards, and frameworks, and in some cases, organizational policies. So it's always important to know what it is that you're testing against. And as we go into the differences, I think you'll better understand. So now with that understanding, let's go into what each one of these terms mean so that you can understand the difference between them. So let's start with laws. What are laws, right? And all my definitions here will be from an IT audit perspective. So a simple way to describe this is that laws are legal requirements that companies need to abide by and they are enforced by governing bodies. So I want you to think about um, the IRS, for example, if you're in the US, you are required to file your taxes annually. It's a legal requirement. And if you don't, there are consequences for that. So that's a law because it's backed and enforced by a governing body. So let's take a look at an example here. From an IT audit perspective, an example is the Sarbanes-Oxley law. This is a legal act. It's also referred to as SOX. And this is a legal requirement for US public companies. So if you're a public company in the US, you are required to comply with the SOX law. And that's it. If a company doesn't do that, there are consequences for that. So when you think about laws, I want you to think about legal requirements that companies need to comply with. That's what laws are. Now let's take a look at standards. So when it comes to standards from an audit perspective, standards are audit requirements that have been put together by experts of a standards body or organization. And in order for a company to be compliant with a specific standard, they would need to meet the requirements that have been set forth by that standards body. So a few examples here are PCI, SSA 18, which is like for the SOC reports, and ISO. There are others out there, but these are key examples that you would see in the IT audit world. And like I said before, if a company wants to be PCI compliant, SSA 18 compliant, or ISO compliant, they will need to meet the requirements of each one of these respective standards, okay? So while standards are not laws, meaning they're not legal requirements that are enforced by the government, a company that wants to be compliant with those standards will need to meet their requirements and that requirement will be enforced by that particular standard body. So for example, for PCI, if a company wants to be PCI DSS compliant, they would need to meet the PCI DSS requirements. And in many cases, because that's for the payment card industry, it's actually enforced based on the contracts between the card processors, the merchants, and the other players in that space. So it's something that they still have to do, but it's not just enforced by a government body. So when you think of standards, they're different from laws in that they are not enforced by a governmental agency, but they are a set of requirements that a company will need to meet if they want or need to be compliant with that particular standard, okay? And the third one we're going to talk about today are frameworks. So what are frameworks? And the interesting thing here is that frameworks are usually confused with standards. You see sometimes people use it interchangeably. And a simple way to kind of understand the difference is that frameworks provide the best practices guideline, outline, or structure that can be used to develop a control environment in an organization. And again, I'm giving you this definition from an IT audit perspective. So when you think about frameworks, it's just giving you that structure, right? It's not something that companies 
technically need to be compliant with. It's just given the structure that says if you want a good, um, effective control environment, then you should follow this framework. It's a guideline, and that's how it's different from standards. Examples of frameworks include COSO, COBIT, and NIST. And all these provide frameworks, guidelines, structure that organizations can use to set up their control environment. I do want to mention something unique about NIST stuff. So with NIST, it's also it's a framework where you think about the NIST um, 853, for example. It's also a framework, but because NIST uh, is something that's put together by the government, right? When it comes to a company that works in the government space, then it's more of a standard requirement because the government requires companies to meet certain NIST guidelines, okay? So for NIST, it's a framework, but when it comes to companies in the government space, then it's more of a standard that they need to meet because of the space that they operate in, okay? So to summarize, laws, standards, and frameworks are different. Laws are legal requirements that are enforced by the government. Standards are requirements that have been put together by a body of experts that companies need to comply with if they want to be compliant with that particular standard. And frameworks provide best practices, guidelines, outlines, um, or structure that companies can use to set up their control environment when we're talking about IT audits. So what you can do now is, as you go out there and do some research on these laws, standards, and frameworks, make sure you now understand what it is that you're looking at when you look at each one, okay? So thank you for joining me for this topic today. Hopefully this has been helpful to you in clarifying the differences between laws, standards, and frameworks. If it's been helpful, please let me know in the comment below, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Tech Talk Weekly. Thank you.